Here's what happened on the Senate floor this afternoon. The author of the Democrats' bill, Banking Committee Chairman Dodd of Connecticut, painting a bleak picture of where things stand with the opposition, which conflicts entirely with the minority leader's assessment of where those negotiations are. The letter from the minority leader that said, we've got 41 votes here to stop you from even debating this bill. Will you explain that to the American taxpayer, to the small business, to the American family, and to others out there who are paying an awful price because of the mess that these very institutions, who are today leading the charge against us getting to a bill, explain to them why the status quo is in their interest and their benefit. Mr. President, those who vote to block this bill will be sending a clear message to American families, businesses, community bankers, and taxpayers. And that message will be, I'm sorry, but we're not on your side. We're choosing another side of this equation. The memo that suggested this game plan, written by the political strategist, was written long before even one word was written on the bill. They were told how to fight the bill that didn't even exist out here by accusing the bill of leaving open the too big to fail, even though they knew, at least those who'd read the bill, that those provisions had been written so tight that no one could possibly argue that too big to fail would ever be allowed again under the bill that we've written. And the Republican leadership returned promising that every member of their caucus would vote to kill this bill before the debate even began. I have never, ever passed a major piece of legislation in this body over, over three decades when I have not had the cooperation and backing of a member or members on the other side of the aisle, never once. On every major piece of legislation I've been involved in. And here we are on the brink of going forward with the, largest, uh, the single largest proposal to reform the financial service sector of our country, and we're divided. I hear like a couple of petulant teenagers, instead of sitting around and coming together as I've offered for months uh, to get behind a bill and allow us to go forward. It's long overdue that we grow up and recognize this isn't some, you know, athletic contest. This is about whether or not our economy can get back on its feet, whether or not we can grow and prosper and create jobs, have credit flow and capital form so that businesses and wealth can be created. And nothing less than that is at stake in this debate and discussion. And all the more reason why we need to go forward. And to go forward like adults, like members of the greatest deliberative body, we are told over and over again in the history of mankind, the United States Senate, to resolve these matters. Now I've worked for hours with my colleague from Alabama, as he well knows, Senator Shelby, to the point that he has said, and I commend him for it, and I appreciate it very much, that we are 80% of the way to a bipartisan consensus. In fact, I suspect that if Richard Shelby were asked today whether that number was 80%, I suspect he'd even have a higher number. Well, imagine being between 80 and 90% in agreement, and yet we're being told by the minority, we can't go forward. Do I let you write the whole bill? Is that when we can go forward? You got, you got 80 or 90% of what you think is a good bill, but no, no, we're going to stop any further debate. In all my years, I've never heard of such an argument. Uh, whether I've been in the minority or the majority, that I agree with 80 or 90% of what you've written, Senator, but I'm sorry. We're going to have to stop even considering any further debate on the floor of the United States Senate. I've worked for many hours with the Senator from Tennessee, Bob Corker, to try to get to 100%, as he well knows. No matter what was said in the meetings between the Republican leadership and Wall Street executives, the fact is that the bill that I'll be bringing to the floor reflects not only a bipartisan input, but good common sense as well. Goodness. Time now to call on our own political analyst.